Christine Phoenix and welcome to this week's lesson for Birdie and Eagle. With what we're going to be going over today for Birdie, we're going to be talking about three types of a goal. So with the three types of goal, you have your process, you have your performance, and then you also have your outcome. All right. With in regards to this goal, what you have control over in different parts of these. For instance, you have 100% control over your process. So are you practicing? Are you taking the time on the range and the putting green and the chipping green and all of those pieces to make sure that you end up having the score that you want at the end of the day? Performance, you have 60% control of this. So for instance, when you are out there playing on the golf course, you hit the perfect shot. It hits the flag stick, flag stick it goes directly into the water. You don't have control over that part, right? Those are, out, um, those are circumstances out of your control. Then you have your outcome. You could have the best round that you've ever shot. You could have hit your lowest round ever. And the other person hit also their lowest round and beat you by one. So you don't have complete control of that. You only have about 40% control of what you can be able to do. So remember, process, performance, and outcome. 100% control, 60% control, and 40% control. For Eagle specifically, we're going to be going over dealing with conflicts. So we're talking about care, right? Are you able to communicate your conflicts? Are you going to be actively listening to the other person? Are you going to be reviewing your options? And are you going to be ending with a win-win solution? So when it talks about dealing with conflicts, are you communicating how you feel in regards to the conflict? Communicating those words in specific phrases, so that way they understand you. Are you actively listening, just like they did for you when you communicated your feelings? Are you reviewing your options with the other person, so that way you end up having a win-win solution for both of you at the end of the day? Those are going to be our life skills that we're going over today. We're also going to be over on the full swing and on the putting green today, working on the centerness of hits. So are you hitting the club? So you need, are you hitting the ball in the center, center part of the club face? Very important. You don't want to have a shot that goes straight or where you want it to, not going right all over the golf course. And finally, our rule for today is going to be a lost ball. So when you hit a shot, is it going out of bounds or you maybe you think it could be lost? You have three minutes to look for that golf ball. When you're out there today, so maybe you're also hitting a provisional to be safe so that way you save some time. Think maybe it did go out of bounds so then you don't have to go all the way back to the tee and then hit another one. Saves a little bit of time with the provisional. So let's get over out there today and hit it over to the putting green and to the full swing shot. All right, we're out here on the putting activity for you guys today. So what we talked about earlier, we're working on centeredness of hit. So what we did for this, we're setting up a golf hole around, uh, set up about three feet around the golf, three to four feet here. Depending on the level, you can do a little bit more. So you can do five feet, six feet, 10 feet, um, I always like to work on shorter putts because if you can't make those short ones, you're never going to have a good score out there. So I always like to work on these shorter putts specifically, especially when it comes to centers of hit. So we've got our golf, our putter here, and what we ended up doing is putting some rubber bands around the center of the club face, right? So this is the center of the club face. We want the golf ball to hit in the center of the club face for you. So Coach Guy is going to demonstrate. He's going to try and hit at the center of the club face here. He's going to set up for the putt. <laughs> this isn't the 16th hole out here, Greg. All right, Coach Guy, we're, we're, we want to be half of the That wasn't good sportsmanship, was it? That wasn't good sportsmanship. Yep. So, again, he's just lining it up in the center of the club face here first. That way we make sure we're setting ourselves up correctly. And then he's going to put it down towards the middle there. Hopefully we'll make another one. So, But you got to keep going around. Again, he's going to all different places on the golf course, or around the hole, right? He's not going to the same one twice because you never hit the same putt twice. And make it in there, go. Yes, yes, yes. There you go, make some noise with it, okay? All right, see if you can do this fourth one over here. this golf hole until so you can make all of them over here. So now with in regards to this, we also want to make sure that we're hitting that club head face. He's hitting it center, right? But maybe he's pulling it or anything that way. So maybe he wants to tighten the rubber bands a little bit for himself to make it a little bit harder. That way he keeps a little bit straighter of a stroke with that too. So depending on your level and how well you get at this, you can narrow down that center. You can make these putts a little bit longer or shorter. Woo! Yes. Toby. Yes. Toby. <laughs> I 
So I'm definitely working on my process goal here. Absolutely. So when we're out here on the golf course today, we're working on that process goal. That's the part that you can 100% control out here, right? You're working on those short putts. You're wanting to hit the center of the club face, and you're wanting to hit the center of the hole. Now, Coach Greg, um, go ahead and hit with a little off center. What happens when you do with those rubber bands? Oh, wow. What happened? One, I could feel it. It was like really soft. Yeah. Kind of dead, it, right? It hit it way offline from where I was trying to aim. Yeah. So it's a little dead off. It didn't go straight down the middle of your line. So I want to make sure that's why we're hitting in the center. That's why that focus is there. All I right. definitely got feedback by the feel of what it, the ball felt like when it hit. Exactly. Putting, especially to me, is a very big a feel portion of your game. So obviously, you want to have good mechanics and part of it too. Woo -woo. Yes, coach. So, we want right there but remember that's gonna be part of it is you're gonna have a nice feel that's you want to feel that center of the club head, head base on that one all right we'll look we'll over to the full swing for you guys we'll see you over there in a little bit all right so we're over here on the range today working on our full swings we're talking about centeredness of hit so where are you hitting it on the club face specifically are you hitting it in the center are you hitting it on the toe, on the heel, wherever that might be? You have a big face to work with, right? So where on the club face are you specifically hitting it? So what we're going to end up doing today is we're going to use a tool that you can find anywhere. Some foot powder, and it's specifically a spray, okay? This is going to be able to stick to the golf club. You can buy this. Obviously, we bought this at a CVS. But you can buy this anywhere, sort of any sort of drugstore, grocery store, anything like that. Uh, you can also use foot powder if you wet your club face a little bit, but this is the best option that we found to use, and it's pretty relatively inexpensive when you consider impact tape or things like that. So we're gonna spray the club head here, Coach Drugs Club. Sprays it, so he's a nice white surface there, coating it nicely. So he's going to hit the, his first shot here, and we're gonna see where on the club face he hit, specifically hits this shot. Nicely done, that's a good swing. So let's take a look at that. So you can see where the ball mark went. It ended up being a little bit towards the heel, but overall in the center, right into the center area here. All right, let's go ahead and hit another one. Don't need a respray, there's plenty of spray on that still. Now, Coach Greg, when you hit that last shot, did it feel, how did that feel to you? Did it feel pretty good on the center? I felt that it was inside. Okay. And I actually, needed, it actually went a little left of my target. Okay, there you go. That's got to be more towards the middle. More towards the middle. Oh, yep. I guess so. On point, right? So when you're using this the split spray and trying to figure out the center of your club face, definitely kind of guess what you're going to be doing. So if you think that that's a little bit more on the toe, you know, guess what it is first, how it feels to you, and then look at the club head face. That'll help you get a better idea without the foot spray and where you're hitting it on the golf course. Because obviously you can't use this on the golf course. So it gives you a better idea of those pieces. All right, so cool part two with this, obviously it's easy to clean up. Don't have to worry about it getting too crazy over here, Oops. right? That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'll come off. Yeah, so just wet it a little bit, it'll come off really easy for you. So you're not gonna ruin your golf clubs or anything like that. But definitely working on the centerness of the club head. You wanna make sure you're getting right in the center if at all possible and realize how it feels when it's not in the center and what can you do to be in the center. So let's say you did hit it on the toe of your coach. What do you wanna do to hit it more in the center of the club face? If you feel like you hit it more, more on the toe specifically, what does the ball look like even? If I hit it on the toe, my ball will normally go a little right and draw. Okay. Because the, the clubs are built that way to change, to help correct the flight. So what I would want to do, I might have been too far away, so I'm hitting it out here. I might move just that half inch closer. Yep. I might have also pulled my hands in. So I, basically what I want to do is figure out a way to keep that path going right through along to the tee's going to hit in the center of the club face. Absolutely. Almost kind of having a track essentially down your club head, right? One of the, creating some railroad yep. tracks One of the games you can do if you're doing that is go ahead and make a game. Make it about the size of your driver. Then tee that ball up in the middle. So yeah, let's do both. Well, why not? Let's see. So we're going to tee it up in the middle. Now, if I go through... Just, just for fun. Okay. 
if I go through and not hit either one of those tees, I should be hitting the ball pretty close to the middle. Let's see how that works. Yep, now, I didn't hit a tee, but I felt that one low and on the heel, and there it is. Definitely low on the heel, right? So that ball flight wasn't too bad as far as straight goes, kind yeah. of holds it a little bit, but ended up curving a little bit to your right, right? Because it auto corrects, so your exactly. body knows what it's doing too. Listen to your body when you're out here, guys. Obviously, you want to have good mechanics and hitting it square and centered through, but you know what you're doing. If you're aiming super far right or your body's going super far one way or the other, you can kind of feel the difference and your body wants to adjust. We're all athletes out here. We're trying to be one, so essentially that's really going to help us out. So. And we talked about over on chipping, how do you get that feel? Practice, right? Absolutely. The more we practice these kinds of drills, the more we start to feel what that good shot was. Yeah, absolutely. Practice, then, practice, practice. And then you can repeat it. Absolutely. All right, well, that's our center dissipate out here on the full for the range here for you guys today. We'll see you next week. All right, Birdie Eagle class, that is our lesson for this week. So what did we go over? So we were on the full swing, uh, did some full swing shots, and we did some stuff on the putting today. We are talking about the centerness of hit. So the center of the club plays, and why do we want to hit that? Okay, we also talked about two life skills. So for Birdie here today, we talked about three types of goal. So you have a process, a performance, and an outcome. Remember, how much of each of those pieces can you control? Then for Eagle, we talked about dealing with conflict. We talked about care specifically. Are you communicating? Are you actively listening? Are you uh, reviewing your options? And then are you ending with a win-win situation? Those are our four parts of care. So, and then also today we talked about a golf rule. We're talking about having a lost ball and a provisional ball. Okay, what are the parts of that? How long does it take to be able to look for a lost ball? Are you able to hit a provisional at any time? How does that work out? So at 4.30 on Thursday, we're gonna be answering some questions. So there are basically four questions in total for you guys that we're gonna go over. So for Eagle, it's gonna be, um, what are your performance, uh, process performance and outcome parts of your goal? So break it down for me. How does that specifically work and how much of each of those pieces can we control? For Eagle, we're talking about care, okay? what? It, why is it important to have you know, dealing with conflicts outside of even the golf course, specifically maybe at school or at home. How do you deal with conflicts using those care pieces? And then for both groups, we're going to be talking about centers of hit. Why is it important to hit the center of the club face? Also with that lost ball rule, how long does it take for you to, to look for it? Do you have three minutes? Do you have five minutes? Do you have seven minutes? How long do you actually take to look for that lost ball? We'll see you on Thursday for the Facebook Live event at 4.30.